League of Legends is played all around the world and even has 18 different servers now. On each of these servers, everyone is playing the same game with these same characters, but it's inevitable that some things will be different from region to region. This could be in the game itself, like a part of a champion, or it could just be the region's culture around League of Legends. Anyways, here are some regional differences in League of Legends, starting with Korea. In 2017, Eve got reworked, and with the rework, she of course received an official new splash art that got released to every server except South Korea's. South Korea deemed it to be too revealing for them, so this replacement was released for them instead. Eventually, Riot even changed Eve's splash art for every server in 2019, including NA's, but they also decided to leave her loading screen splash art alone for some reason. I guess it's okay in smaller images. Unlike a lot of servers like NA, EU, or OCE, when it comes to making a brand new account in Korea, you need to register with an IPIN or a Korean phone number. An IPIN stands for Internet Personal Identification Number, and it's essentially a gateway to all online services in Korea. So right off the bat, it's already a bit harder to make accounts. When it comes to people boosting on other servers, the most punishment people usually receive is a slap on the wrist and maybe even a ban. But in South Korea, boosting accounts can be punishable by up to two years in prison. I guess that's one way to fix the problem. PC bongs are a staple in Korean gaming culture. In the United States, you may find one here and there, but in Korea, they're literally everywhere. There are now well over 23,000 PC bongs spread out across the country. And for those who don't know, PC bongs are internet cafes. They're basically places where a bunch of gaming PCs and other gaming machines are available where people can come and play as long as they want for an average of about 70 cents per hour. Also, if you play at these PC bongs and on their PCs, they usually come with some little perks too. Like for League of Legends, all the champions are usually unlocked. And depending on the cafe you're at, you can sometimes get some bonus rewards too. The official LCK studio and stage is actually inside a custom PC bong and has its own venue named LOL Park. LOL Park is basically like a League of Legends playhouse and it's pretty much in the middle of Seoul. It's pretty insane. If you ever find yourself playing on the LCK server, you may also find that people forfeit way more often and there are actually a few reasons behind this. For one, a lot of the people do play in PC bongs and they don't want to waste their money dragging a game out. And two is their schedules. A lot of players in Korea are students and they're fairly limited on the amount of time that they can play League. On weeknights, they barely have any time to play, but on the weekends, it's not uncommon for people to grind 12 to 14 hours at a time. There are many out there that will play from something like 3 p.m. to 3 a.m. and then wake up for school at 6 a.m. It's crazy and it's also pretty normal for a lot of the youth in Korea. Additionally, because they're trying to make the most out of their time, they're typically looking for easy wins and if things aren't looking their way, they'll probably forfeit. This is the complete opposite of NA mentality where we have more of a mindset that we can always come back if we drag the game on long enough. For them, if they're dealt a bad hand or in this case a bad team, they just fold and move on to the next game. In fact, the Korean server unsurprisingly has the highest surrender rate by far at 38.2% than a third of their games. Another thing worth noting is that League in Korea is way more mechanic based than macro based. Players over there would much rather focus on becoming the best in abilities and mechanics and then focus on strategy because in their mind if they can stomp their opponent in lane who needs to think about strategy. It's the same reason why players like TF play can climb so much easier than someone like Tyler1. Bro, when have you ever seen a Yasuo do it that clean by the way? I swear to god you couldn't. You couldn't do that today. And lastly, for Korea, we have to talk about the voices. Voice acting for every champion will always change if there's a different language spoken, but some changes are a bit more interesting than others. Ari is a perfect example of this. How do I put this? Ari's Korean voice is a little bit, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> What's funny about this is that the voice in NA was originally supposed to be, uh, what's the word? Sus? I guess Riot knows their target audience. <laughs> But it wasn't supposed to be that sus. However, when Korea did the voice, they pretty much said F it, we're all in, and this was the result. Ah! What I'm learning from this is that visually sus is not okay for Korea, but for some reason, if it's vocal, it's all good. Anyways, if you're enjoying, don't forget to poke that sub button and let's move on to China. For starters, like the Korean server, making Chinese accounts requires a personal ID number. But what's a bit bigger and more exciting than that is that there are a lot of censorships in China versus other regions. China is notorious for being a lot more strict about what is and what isn't okay. For example, back in the day, Uncle Rise's splash art looked like this, but it wasn't approved for the Chinese server because he was holding the declaration 
Declaration of Independence. And to solve this issue, they decided to change it to some random text and also a bunch of US currency in the background, which in my opinion makes it worse and more patriotic to the US, but what do I know? Many more of the splash arts had to be changed or altered, including a lot of the female champions because they were deemed too revealing. For example, this is the misfortune we all know, and this is the more covered up version for the Chinese server. Here's normal Shivana, and now here's less cold Shivana. Here we got normal Janna, and now covered up Janna. And finally, the last one I'm showing you is honestly kind of justifiable. It was pretty crazy before, so I understand why they had to change it, but nevertheless, it was Jinx. This is the old Jinx, and this is the censored one. And yeah, it took me a while to find the difference too. On top of that, the Chinese server has over 2,500 extra words completely banned and censored from the game. I'm sorry to say that there is no more saying two girls, one cup in chat. Some other interesting differences are barely anyone on the Chinese server levels to 30 anymore because you can buy level 30 accounts for like 15 to 20 dollars. This is mainly due to the fact that a company called Tencent actually runs the Chinese servers and Riot doesn't have complete control or say over these kinds of things. This of course has also led to some other issues popping up like the regulation of third party apps for instance. Some of the apps have given players some ridiculous advantages before like being able to zoom out and see the entire map of Summoner's Rift. And honestly the advantages some of these provide are endless. There are ones that showed you replays of your death, ones that would have timers for pretty much everything, and even ones that allowed you to vocally speak to others. Also, in case you didn't catch that earlier, I did say servers. China actually has 29 different servers spread out across the country that you can play on. You can basically choose which one gives you the lowest ping and then play on that one. However, the most popular one by far is the Ionian server, and yes, it's actually called that. Interestingly enough, you can't say the name of the Chinese president in League, but you can say the name of other presidents from other countries. One pretty notable one is that player names aren't actually visible in the champion select screen, so people don't know who they're playing with until they're actually in game. I could easily see some pros and cons to both sides, but nevertheless, it's pretty interesting. The rarity of skins in China are actually separated by tiers instead of labels. Skins start at tier 1 and then go all the way up to tier 9. The names of champions in China translates to English a bit differently. For example, Brand translates to the Fire Guy, Corky translates to Airplane, Nami Big Fish, Fizz Little Fish, Soraka Wet Nurse, and Lucian Obama. The list goes on, so feel free to pause and check some of these out. The Chinese server sometimes receives events tailored to just their server, like when EDG won Worlds, for instance. During that period of time, they received huge discounts on skins, and by huge discounts, I mean some of them only cost one RP. And for a good chunk of time, all the champions were free to play too. And even when there wasn't events taking place, new players always received free XP boost, free champions, and skins to help people hit level 30 insanely fast, like one to two days fast. The Chinese client themselves are packed full of rewards for players too, like like TFT passes, leak passes, orange essence, and specific event rewards. Additionally, the client even features some custom room pages for you like you'd see in third-party apps that we use, but built into the client itself. In other words, the Chinese client is way ahead of everyone else. Anyways, moving on to the Brazilian and Latin American servers. To start, Bard isn't Bard down there, he's Bardo. And River Spirit Nami is called Iara because the skin was inspired by the mythology of Iara, basically a mermaid Brazilian folklore. And for some reason, there's a male announcer on the Brazilian server too. I've briefly talked about this in one of my other videos, but one of the most notable differences in the Brazilian and Latin American servers was adding in Camp Yordle. For those who don't know, Camp Yordle was added in to help lower toxicity because it was so bad over there. Basically how it worked was there was two teams, Team Gear and Team Crystal, and each team was given a health bar. The goal was to have health left in your health bar by the end of the day, and if you did, you would receive some extra prizes like chests or keys. What was ironic about this was both teams could technically win, but people just started spam reporting the other team to make them lose. It wasn't enough for people to win, the other team had to lose as well. Eventually, it was actually brought back in 2018 and improved upon. Anyways, moving on to the Garena server. For those who don't know, the Garena server is in Southeast Asia, and Garena itself is a consumer internet platform provider. The Garena server is unfortunately notorious for kind of sucking. For one, they don't even have a draft mode because it's too small, and two, it's said that a lot of the time they won't even get big updates until days after it's rolled out to other servers just because it's such a low priority. It's kind of sad actually. There was even a time where Garena installed a Bitcoin miner inside the client, which is insane. But enough about that, let's move on. The rest of these are just kind of random differences from all over the place. The price of RP is something that is never consistent across all servers, mostly because everyone's economy is usually different. These are the comparisons of RP between each server. We got NA, EU, EUNE, Brazil, OCE, Latin America, Latin America South, Russia, Turkey, SG, and Vietnam. Sometimes Riot has giveaways for specific regions too, like the recent KitKat event that was taking place the other day. This was for Latin American servers and it was basically Hextech chests wrapped in a KitKat that you could earn from registering on their site. They've also done some similar
similar stuff in the past with other regions like Turkey a couple years back where you could win Hextech chests from buying Coke. That's Coca-Cola, by the way. Honestly, I've never seen a promotion like this in NA, but it'd be cool if they added it in someday. I know we went over a bit of voices earlier, but this is Ramus's French voice actor. And I don't know if I should be happy or creeped out from it. D'accord. Okay. Bien. Oui. And lastly, did you know that Zareth has an exclusive quote for the Japanese server referencing Dio from JoJo? Anyways, that's it. Thanks for watching and let me know any other regional differences you know about in the comments. And of course, a huge fat shout out to my tier 3 patrons, Stefan Noctak and James, and thank you so much to other patrons as well. Alright, bye!